What's going on guys? Today we're going to take a deep dive into this comprehensive guide on how to make millions with special cargo warehouses in GTA 5 Online. We currently have double money on special cargo sale missions through the rest of this update week, so I figured this would be the perfect time to drop this guide. If you're looking to get into the special cargo business and want to make some serious money before the week is up, then pay close attention because I'm going to be throwing a lot of stuff your way in just a minute. And even if you're someone that's been filling warehouses and running special cargo for years, trust me, there's still some valuable information in here. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, first things first, if you want to sell special cargo, you'll need a warehouse. And before you can buy a warehouse, you'll first have to purchase a CEO office. Luckily for us, CEO offices are currently 30% off this week, along with their modifications and interiors. So go onto the Dynasty Executive website and pick an office that you like. There are benefits and drawbacks to each, so if you want to see a detailed comparison of each office along with their pros and cons, check out this video that's popping up on the screen now or find the link in the description. Even if you're not buying one for the first time and are simply thinking about relocating, I'd recommend hopping on this now before the discount is over. I seriously regretted not relocating last time around, so this time I made sure to do it right after selling my warehouses. If you're wondering, I previously owned Maze Bank West, the cheapest office which I got for free a while back, and relocated to the Arcadius Business Center. But enough about that. Let's assume you already know which one you want so we can move on. Once you've purchased an executive office, head to that building, go inside, and when you're able, log into the computer on your desk. Then click the special cargo option on the left. Now open up the warehouse map and you'll see that there are three different sizes of warehouses. Small, medium, and large. Now while the biggest or most expensive options aren't necessarily always the best when it comes to every business and property in the game, that actually is the case here, and when we break it down, it's pretty obvious why. Small warehouses cost the least, but can only fit 16 crates of special cargo before they're filled. So of course, when you go to sell them, you won't be making a ton back, although you'll still be making a profit, especially with double money. Medium warehouses can store up to 42 crates, and it'll certainly make you more than a small warehouse, but when it comes to making the big bucks with special cargo, large warehouses are the top dogs. You can fit up to 111 crates in large warehouses, and while yes, the upfront cost might be much higher, the payouts will make your money back and more. And with double money on sell missions, one full warehouse sell can easily pay for two warehouses depending on location. Oh, and did I not mention that on top of the double money and 30% off CEO offices, we also have a 30% discount on large warehouses this week? Yeah, if there was ever a time to buy, it's right now. And speaking of location, which are the best large warehouses to buy? That's of course up to you, but I always recommend picking up at least two of these four. The West Vinewood Backlot, Wholesale Furniture, Logistics Depot, and Darnell Bros Warehouse. If you have a terabyte or an arcade somewhat near the center of the city with a master control terminal inside, then it almost doesn't matter which one of these you choose. The only way it would really make that much of a difference is if your only way of launching crate missions is from your CEO office, because then you may want to look at ones closer to your office location. But since sourcing crates can take you anywhere from just above the city to the very bottom of the map and everywhere in between, it's not going to kill you either way. Personally, if you have an oppressor or another way of getting around the map, I go for the cheapest warehouses that aren't too far off, like the West Vinewood Backlot and Wholesale Furniture. Okay, so let's say you now bought at least one large warehouse. Now what? Well, now you gotta think about how you're gonna get special cargo to store in that warehouse. Sourcing special cargo is relatively simple and straightforward. The real question is where are you launching these missions from? Like I mentioned before, if you have a terabyte, you're golden, because that's gonna be the easiest and fastest way of going about this, and I'll explain why in more detail in a few minutes. If you can't get a terabyte yet, that's okay. Sourcing from your office building or a master control terminal will work just fine. Although it does depend on the location when it comes to the master control terminal, because obviously you don't want to be starting these crate missions from your Polito Bay Arcade if your warehouse is near the bottom of the city. But whether you're starting from your office building or your terabyte, you're still going to need to understand how this whole sourcing crates thing works. To get us all on the same page, I'm quickly going to show you how to get to the sourcing page from each of these three locations. If you're in your office, go back on your computer and open up that warehouse map again. This time, click on the one that you own, which will be green as opposed to the others, and wait one second while I move over to my MCT in my arcade to show you how we log on and come down here to Special Cargo, and then click Source Cargo, and now we're there as well. And finally, go into the back of your terabyte and hop on this cool little screen here. Then move right to Special Cargo, click it, and now we're all caught up. Okay, so now I'm gonna break it all down for you. So as you can see, there are three different options. You can source one crate, two crates, or three crates, and they all have a different price point. If you source one crate, there's going to be a $2,000 cost up front. If you source two crates, it's going to cost you 8k, which is 4k per crate. If you source three crates, it's going to cost you 18k, which is 6k per crate. So you might be wondering, why is sourcing three crates more expensive? Simply put, opportunity cost. It'll take you significantly less time to fill your warehouse adding three crates versus one each time. 
If our intention is to fill our large warehouse, we have to bring in 111 crates. Instead of running 111 source missions, we only have to run 37 if we're bringing in three crates per job. Now add on the fact that there's a five minute cooldown between source missions if you're trying to bring them to the same warehouse, and just think about the amount of time it would take to run 111 source missions, while also having to wait five minutes each time between those missions to be able to source cargo for that warehouse again. So what does this mean? Yes, if you were to buy less crates each time, it'll cost you less money up front, and in the end you will make more profit but it'll take significantly more time to collect, and in a game like GTA, time is money. Now when you're bringing in these crates to your warehouse, the total sale value of the cargo does change depending on the amount of stock that's in your warehouse. Pretty much, less stock equals less sale value per crate. Now I'm going to give you an example of how this works, but this example does not take into account double money on special cargo, so you can make way more money this week than what I'm about to show you. Okay, so let's say you have 27 crates. You completed 9 source missions of 3 crates per source, which is of course assuming you didn't do 27 single crate source missions, or a combination of 2 crates per source and 1 crate per source to get to 27. Now if you went to sell all 27 in your warehouse, you'll notice that the sell value is 432,000, which is 16,000 per crate sold. And we get that by dividing 432 by 27, or the total sell value divided by the number of crates. If you bought 1 crate per source mission at 2,000 per crate, it would cost you a total of 54k up front. And that math is simple, you just multiply the amount of crates that you have by the amount it costs you per source. So if you were to sell those 27 crates, the profit from those crates would now bring you in 378k. And we get that by taking the total sell value and subtracting the total crate cost. And that'll give us our profit. If you'd bought 2 crates per source at 4k per crate, it would cost you 108,000 up front. Now the profit from those 27 crates that you would have sold would bring you in 324k after we subtract the total crate cost from the sell value. Now if you bought 3 crates per source at 6k per crate, the profit you'll earn from subtracting the total crate cost from the sell value will result in a 270k profit. If you filled your warehouse to 111 crates with 1 crate per source at 2k per crate, the total cost up front will be 222k, but now the total sell value will be over 2.2 million. So if we take that sell value and divide it by the total number of crates, that equals 20k per crate sold. We would have profited just under 2 million dollars, to be exact 1.998 million. If we had bought two crates per source at 4k per crate, that would have costed us 444k with a profit of 1.776 million. Had we brought in three crates per source at 6k per crate, it would have costed us 666,000 with a final profit of 1.554 million. What does this mean? It means always try to fill your warehouse before selling. Regardless of the number of crates you source per mission, more crates in your warehouse equals more money per crate. So yes, I absolutely recommend doing 3 crates per source, so there's less time spent doing these crate missions. Again, it just comes down to opportunity cost. You can spend that time that you save from sourcing to do other sell missions, heists, or anything else that's more fun or makes you more money per hour. Okay, now that you have a better understanding of what sourcing means and the potential profits that can come from it, let's talk about one more thing before you start sourcing your life away. And that's sourcing special cargo through your warehouse staff. You can use the staff member inside of your warehouse to source crates passively. Each time you do this, it'll cost you 7.5k per source, and it'll take 48 minutes or one in-game day for them to finish sourcing. But this week, with double warehouse staff sourcing speed, it'll only take 24 minutes per source. And you may ask, why would I want to spend 7.5k per source when I can do it myself for less cost per crate? Well, because your warehouse staff can source anywhere from 1 to 3 crates per source, meaning you could pay 7,500 for up to 3 crates, which would bring it down to a 2.5k cost per crate, which is almost as good as sourcing each crate individually. Plus the staff even has a chance to source special items, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. While a majority of the time you'll only get one crate from sourcing passively through your staff, this allows you more time to do other things in GTA, or to source crates yourself to fill up the warehouse faster. And if you get the occasional 2 or 3 crates each time, it ends up being cheaper than the cost to source that amount yourself. Even if you strictly source cargo just from your staff, costing you 7.5k each time to fill your warehouse with 111 crates, and they only brought back one crate per source, you'd still turn a nice profit. If you multiply the 7,500 cost per crate by 111, the total number of crates, you'll get a total crate cost of just over 832k. Now if you take the total sell value of over 2.2 million and subtract that from the 832,000 total cost, you'll still profit approximately 1.38 million. This is why you need at least one large warehouse. The absolute least amount of money you can make is 1.38 million with barely any effort, other than the time spent sending your staff out to source. And chances are you'll make an even better profit since it's unlikely that your staff will only source one crate each time out of all 111 crates. Alright, now I'm going to give you some sourcing tips and recommendations to help you get things moving as quickly as possible. But I will be discussing this under the assumption that you have at least two warehouses, because that factors into this speedy process. If you only have one, don't worry, we'll get you there soon. 
Just follow along as much as you're able because most of this will help you now, but all of this will help you in the future. Okay, so some tips to sourcing special cargo efficiently. Own at least two large warehouses and always send your staff out to source passively whenever you enter your warehouse. Source three crates permission for the first large warehouse, then once delivered, source another three at the second warehouse. It should only take you about five to 10 minutes to complete each. And if you do this correctly, you'll never have to wait around for the cooldown times as the cooldown for the warehouse you first completed will be over by the time you finish delivering cargo to the second warehouse. Source from either a terabyte station between your two warehouses or from a master control terminal in your arcade, but only if it's somewhat located in the middle of your two warehouses or at least nearby one of them. The reason for these over sourcing from your CEO office is that the terabyte is able to be moved around before, during, and after missions, making it easier to access than going to your CEO office each time, as well as it being quicker to enter and exit, which speeds up the process as a whole. The MCT can be a better option than your office based on the location of your arcade and because it's easier to come and go from. Otherwise, the terabyte is still the best option. If you're at this point, the only reason you should be going to your office is to buy other warehouses or to export mixed goods. Otherwise, sourcing from the terabyte or MCT, depending on location, will be more time efficient. And another small tip, own one small warehouse and use it to collect special items that occasionally pop up. What are special items? Special items are worth more money than regular cargo, but can only be collected occasionally and are not sold as part of your special cargo sale. There are six special items that you can find in total. They can be found on the sourcing page in any of the three sourcing locations, and it'll be obvious because it'll be at a higher cost and it'll say special item. They can also be acquired from the mystery prize section on the lucky wheel inside of the diamond casino. And there's also a chance that your assistant will call you informing you of a special item being available to source. Now that we have a full understanding of how to make money from warehouses, let's talk about what potential vehicles we'll be using to sell our special cargo. Inside of the warehouse, you'll find a small workbench that you can interact with. Here is where you can add upgrades to your delivery vehicles. There are three different vehicle types, but four possible vehicles that you can use. And what that means is there's one truck option, the Brocade, two plane options, the Titan and the Cuban 800, and one boat option, the tugboat. Now, if you're looking to upgrade those vehicles, there are two upgrade options for each vehicle type. For truck upgrades, we have armor that costs 230,000 and bulletproof tires that cost 95,000. For plane upgrades, we have armor that costs 190,000 and a radar jammer that costs 300,000. And for boat upgrades, we have armor that costs 265,000 and a speed enhancement that costs 170,000. If you were to buy all of these upgrades, it'll total at 1.25 million. Now for which ones you need, if you're selling in an invite only lobby, I only recommend that you buy the bulletproof tires for the brocade and the speed upgrade for the tugboat. The others simply aren't necessary. And I'll explain why I didn't mention planes here in a minute. However, if you're selling in a public lobby, especially if you're doing it solo, I recommend you buy all the upgrades. Now that we know what we'll be delivering our cargo in, it would probably be a good idea to figure out what exactly we'll be doing in that vehicle. And this is where it gets a bit complicated. So as far as special cargo cell missions, there are three different mission types, each with multiple variants. For the Brocade, we have a standard drop-off mission where you enter the Brocade and you have anywhere from one to three vehicles to deliver depending on the amount of cargo that's being sold. Then you simply drive to a location and drop off the vehicle. That is by far the easiest truck mission and probably the easiest mission overall. If you get that one, you're fortunate. The second is the Brocade Trackify mission. In this one, you enter your Brocade, again, one to three vehicles. You open up Trackify on your phone and use it to search for the drop-off location. You then drive to that location and drop off your vehicle. Once again, one of the easier missions. The next is the clean drop-off. In this, you enter the brocade, one to three vehicles, and drive to a location while attempting to take the least amount of damage possible to earn a bonus payment. In this mission, you can't lose your warehouse stock value, so at the very least, you'll be selling for whatever your cargo is worth, but if you damage the vehicle too much, you can lose that bonus reward. And obviously, to finish this, all you get to do is drop off that vehicle with the least amount of damage possible, and you can finish that mission. Again, one of the easier ones. Another brocade variant is the multiple drop-offs, in which you enter the brocade, one to three vehicles, and then drive to five different drop-off locations per vehicle with the possibility of being attacked by enemies while driving or with the possibility of cops being alerted after your first drop-off, and then complete it by dropping off those vehicles after you complete the five drop-offs for each of them. So a fairly easy one, but definitely more time consuming. And the last possible brocade mission is the rival NPCs, which itself has multiple variants. So you enter your brocade, one to three vehicles, and you drive to a location while being attacked by enemies, or you arrive at the location, then have to protect your cargo from enemies there. Once again, a pretty easy mission. If you get any of the truck missions, you should be in good shape. Now for the tugboat variants, the first one is the regular tug drop-off. All you do is go to the tugboat location, enter the tugboat, and then drive out to sea with enemies attacking on jet skis and or a helicopter as you near the drop-off. So if you can survive that, just drop off the vehicle and you're all done. Even this one is a pretty easy mission. The other tugboat variant is the tugboat ambush at the dock. So in this one, head to the tugboat location where you'll be ambushed by enemies staking out near the docks. 
Then just clear out the enemies and enter the tugboat. Drive it out to sea and drop it off. In my opinion, this is the easier of the two boat missions. Again, if you get this one, I think you're pretty lucky. As for the plane missions, there are both multiple variants of the Titan missions and the Cuban 800 missions. But I'm not going to go into detail on those, because if you don't get one of the truck or boat missions, and you spawn into a cell mission telling you to hop in a plane, I suggest you join a new session and try again. Look, if you're experienced with the plane missions, and know how to get around without being blown out of the sky, then by all means, do it up. Personally, I found them not to be worth the time or the risk. And if you're just getting into this business, I highly recommend you try to get one of the other cell missions. You'll only lose a few crates for leaving, which can be easily replaced in one source mission. So to sum it up, if you see anything about going to the airport, or hear anything about a plane, run. Alright, so that's about every bit of information I could possibly think of as being important to the special cargo business and making millions with special cargo warehouses. If it isn't clear by now, this is a long-term investment. But to give you some context and clue you into what most people do, I've been passively stocking my two large warehouses for the last month or so, barely running any crate missions until this event week. And after filling and selling both of them, along with my one small warehouse, I brought in about 10 million yesterday. You can absolutely grind crates and make money selling at any point, but nothing feels better than being ready to go when double money comes around and seeing 4.4 million added to your account by doing an easy 10 minute sell mission when all you did was passively source from your staff. And that's just from one warehouse. I bought another large warehouse yesterday because of the discount, and even if I'm not able to sell it again by Thursday, I can still make a profit whenever I fill it, or I can buy another and be ready to sell four large warehouses the next time a double money event rolls around. I know that was a lot, but I wanted to be as detailed as possible so everyone would be well aware of what they're getting into and what they're getting out of this. I didn't call this a comprehensive guide for nothing. I truly hope this video was helpful and provided you with everything you needed to know about special cargo and how to make money with warehouses in GTA 5 Online. As always, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you on the next one. Skull.